Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to learn about the representation of the geometry of the system in Monte Carlo simulations. In Monte Carlo simulations, the geometry can be represented as accurately as needed. And this is because the geometry can be divided into elementary space regions, uh, so-called cells, which can be bounded by different surfaces. So typically the Monte Carlo code does not pose any limitations to the level of the accuracy with which we want to create the model of the geometry. From this point of view, Monte Carlo codes have a big advantage as compared to the deterministic solvers. In case of the deterministic solvers, the geometry of the system has to be homogenized over a number of nodes. And this homogenization uh, introduces some uh, bias into the results. Let's have a look at the way how the different surfaces are captured by the Monte Carlo codes. So basically any surface can be expressed uh, in terms of its equation in this form. The left hand side must equal to zero. The left hand side is a function of three parameters, the coordinates x, y, z. So let's say that we have some surface here and when uh, we evaluate a point on the surface by this equation, then the equation will return zero exactly. If you try to evaluate a point which lies outside of the surface, this function will return a number which is different from zero. So on this slide you can see a list of some basic surface types such as planes, spheres, cylinders and some other and their corresponding equations by which they are exactly determined. So these equations they include the x, y, z coordinates and they also include some additional parameters. So uh, different uh, surface types include a different number of additional parameters. So uh, in case of general plane we need uh, four additional parameters. In case of a cylinder which is parallel to one of the uh, axes of the coordinate system we need only three parameters. So when we uh, define these surfaces in the input file for uh, our Monte Carlo simulations we have to specify all these parameters. So we have already learned about the so-called space regions when we were learning about the input file for the serpent code. The space regions are created by dividing the whole space into two parts by different surfaces. So in most Monte Carlo codes all the surfaces which are available to the user divide the whole space into two parts. And in order to separate the different uh, space regions from each other we assign a negative sign to one of the regions. So which one we choose to assign the negative sign to depends on the side on which it lies in respect to the uh, surface. So if it lies on the negative side then we assign negative uh, sign to the uh, region. So how do we know what uh, side of the surface is negative. So we have learned about some uh, conventions like when the surface is closed such as a sphere or cylinder we assign negative sign to the part which is inside of the surface. Here I have a general rule how to decide the uh, sense of the surface. So you simply uh, select a point uh, in the space region to which you want to decide the, uh, uh, the sense and evaluate the function for the surface uh, at this point. right? So if this function returns a value which is negative 
then the point is in a space region which has a negative uh, sense. If it is uh, positive and the function returns a positive value, then the point is in the space region which has a positive sense with respect to the surface. So then the actual uh, physical model is created by uh, operations on the regions associated with the positive and negative sides of the surfaces that we created. Now we can do several operations with these spatial regions. We can uh, intersect them with each other. And by this uh, operation we can create uh, cells from which we build up the whole uh, model for the simulation. So this is how we do it uh, in the Serpent1 code. We use the intersection operator for uh, the different space regions. And by this we can create any shape we like. Uh, in principle other codes, uh, including Serpent2, uh, make it possible to use also the union operations for the spatial regions. So this can be helpful in some cases. You can always create uh, any cell by only the intersection operator, but uh, in some cases the union operator makes it uh, easier to create uh, some specific shapes. So uh, the MCMP code, for instance, includes uh, the both operations. Together with the geometry of the system, we also have to specify the boundary conditions for neutrons. So uh, let's assume we have a surface of the system. So the system is here and uh, we have a neutron that flies towards the boundary of the system. So uh, it hits the uh, boundary at this point. So now we have to decide what to do with the neutron. Uh, we have uh, three options uh, which we need to specify in the input file. So one of the options is that uh, we apply the void conditions or sometimes we say black conditions on the boundaries of the system. So in this case the neutron is killed. So what does it mean? The, we assume the neutron escapes from the system and it never returns. So of course in this case we should not continue the simulation of this particular neutron history because we would be just wasting the computing time. In fact, if we continue the simulation of this particular neutron history, so it would uh, escape from the system here, but there would be just void outside, then it would never collide and we would never really terminate the simulation. So our simulation of the neutron transport would be stuck on this particle or neutron history. And that sometimes happens in the simulation when you, uh, when you set up the boundary conditions incorrectly. Right? So for instance, uh, when you don't specify the uh, void conditions, in such a case, then the Monte Carlo code has no way to know what you want really to simulate. So it would continue the simulation of the neutron history uh, forever. All right, so let's assume that we have the void boundary conditions and let's, let's assume that the uh, neutron is stopped at the boundary. And now the system needs to decide whether the neutron is leaving the system or not. How does the code know? So the code looks at the direction given by the direction vector omega and it also calculates the vector which is normal to the surface at which point the neutron is uh, crossing the surface. So that uh, vector in this case would look like uh, this. So this is the normal vector. Then the projection of omega onto the uh, normal vector is calculated. So in this case the projection would be this number here, which is positive. So 
the Monte Carlo code checks this projection of omega onto the normal vector. If it is positive, it means that the neutron is trying to escape from the system, so the code must kill the neutron. The other option is that we specify the reflective boundary conditions on the system. So in this case we expect that the neutron will bounce from the uh, boundary, so it will change its uh, direction from omega into omega prime. So how do we calculate the omega prime vector? Uh, we have to solve a system of equations. One of the equations is written here, and you can see that it says that the projection of the original vector omega onto the normal vector uh, must equal the projection of the omega prime, so that's the reflected omega, into the uh, opposite uh, normal vector. So the opposite normal vector is here, so this is minus n, and then the projection of omega prime into the opposite normal vector is here. So this value has to be the same as this one. So this equation is a scalar equation. Uh, the omega prime vector has uh, three unknown elements in it. So uh, we need basically three equations for the three unknown elements. So this is one of the equations that we need. The second equation uh, may be the equation that says that the omega prime vector is a unit vector, right? Any directional vector is a unit vector. So the size of this vector is 1. So that is the second equation. And we need one more equation in order to determine the omega prime uh, vector exactly. So the last quality that uh, the omega prime vector has is that it is parallel to a plane to which both the normal vector n and the omega vector are parallel to. So we can take these two uh, vectors, the normal vector and the omega vector, can construct a plane which is parallel to both of these vectors. So the last equation limits the omega prime vector to such values which uh, are parallel to the uh, to this plane that we constructed. And finally, we can also define the so-called albedo boundary conditions, which means that only a fraction uh, of the particles is reflected uh, back into the system, and the rest of the particles just leaks out of the system. So we need to specify the fraction alpha uh, for those particles which are reflected back. So in case of the analog Monte Carlo simulations, we only have to decide whether the particle is reflected or not. But we know the probability with which the particle is reflected, so we can easily decide. Uh, later we are going to learn about the so-called non-analog simulations, in which uh, the history is simulated in a little bit different way. Uh, and in that case, we simply adjust the so-called statistical weight. But we are going to learn about this later. And that is all for now. Have a nice day.